guys out on the same job sites with us. We got all respect in the world for what you guys do. That first thing we want to do is thank you for what you do every day, and that's keeping us safe. <laughs> This is, uh, before we get started, I want to introduce my team. I'm Mike Powers. I work at our safety and training center. This is Steve Crone. He works at our safety and training center with us. He's one of our instructors. He teaches our linemen how to be linemen. Steve's also the guy that came up with the idea for this trailer and uh, drew it all up and, and uh, got with some of our safety advocates and some of our trainees. Uh, Ronnie Wells is one of our safety advocates to help him build it. So we just kind of built this thing from scratch. Hope you all like it. As I said, this is Ronnie Wells. He's got in a tan colored shirt. <coughs> Ronnie's one of our first responders who goes out whenever you guys go out on like a vehicle accident call, uh, lights are out, that sort of thing. Ronnie's one of the first ones that shows up on the job site, and uh, he's, our, he's our first responder. He's a serviceman out of Midlothian area, out of the Richmond area, Ronnie. And then Richard Kirby, Richard's uh, one of our safety specialists. He's a local guy. He's, a, he's our safety specialist out of Midlothian that goes out and makes sure all our crews are working safely. Helps people educate people with stuff like this. So, Again, thank you all for having us out here. Now, our uh, electrical safety demonstration unit here, what we're going to do, we're back feeding from your transformer over here. We're going to get, because of the voltage we've got in your transformer, we're going to get about 6,000 volts. It really is 6,000 volts on our primary here. We're going to put a meter on there and show, show it to you in a little bit. But what this is all about um, at Dominion, safety is our number one core value. And that doesn't mean, of course, it means our safety for our employees, but it also means safety for guys like you, you know, our first responders. Uh, we don't want anybody to get hurt around our product, working on our product, around our product, or, or certainly any of our customers get hurt with our product. So we've got this thing out here, and we hope to get uh, videos. We shot some videos earlier. Hope to get those sort of things out, get it on the news, so as many people as possible can see this, see the message, and learn some of the um, hazards associated with electricity. And now you all know, you guys know that most people couldn't imagine today, living in today's society without electricity, all the conveniences it, it brings us. You know, you, you flip the switch on, the lights come on, you know, you turn the, turn the knob and your, your house gets cooler with the air conditioning and that sort of thing, day like today. But there are some inherent hazards associated with, with power lines, and we're going to talk to you about those. Sometimes, like after a storm, when the lines go down, you got low lines, we're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, vehicle accident, where you guys, and this is where it really comes up with you guys, you guys a lot of times get on the scene before, long before we do. And we want to teach you some of the, some of the hidden hazards, maybe associated with a down power line, and uh, keep you guys safe. So, all right, we're, we're going to go ahead and get started. As you as you see, just to give you a little, like I say, when the red light comes on, we heated this thing up. We've got about six thousand or so volts on this thing. And you'll see the light over there. That's our watch light. That'll let you know that we've also got it powered up. It's got a little fuel to it. The red light just went off, so we, we killed the power to it. The first thing we're going to do, like I said, Steve is uh, one of our instructors down at our, our uh, training center. Now what we're going to do is something, we're getting ready to do something we, talk, we, we teach all our linemen not to do. We're going to intentionally put a little ground on here to draw an arc, and that's just so we can show you what an electrical arc looks like. Um, so, Mr. Wells, you ready? got this thing going, we've got our uh, 6,000, about 6,000 volts going to the ground and we're pulling it off, drawing an arc, and that's because we've got a different potential. Notice the uh, crow up there, anybody, you guys, everybody's seen a bird laying up on the wire, right? Yeah, can anybody tell me why the bird can land up on the wire he doesn't get hurt? Right, there's no path to ground, there's no difference of potential, we'll talk a lot about that, the difference of potential, you don't want to, you never want to become the path to ground. So the old bird, he can land up there on the wire and there's no path to ground, but if he gets up, if he were to cross over that insulator there to the pole, he would become the path to ground. Well, that's why, that's one of the most important things to remember about this. We'll give you a, a you guys saw the electrical arc a minute ago, but what would happen if we walked up to a down power line and were to reach out and touch it or reach, get close to it? You, you would become that path to ground. So we're going to demonstrate that with a hot dog. And we use a hot dog because that's just something to kind of demonstrate. It's about the same consistency of the human body. And, so we'll, we'll use a hot dog to demonstrate what happened if someone touched the down power line. Yeah, I was done. You're quite hungry. <laughs> and I will say this, I mean, uh, this is a very controlled uh, environment here. We've got the kill switch you guys saw. Uh, 
Steve, with the on and off switch, the on and off button here. The other thing, if you've ever seen like an electrical sine wave, it, you know, it's like a, it's a sine wave up and down. Well, this thing starts at zero and it's real quick because he's, he's on and off with the kill switch. In the real world, on a real down power line, that thing may have well over 100 amps already on it, so it's, it's higher up, and he gets to a higher fault current quicker. It'll be a much more intense arc, louder, more powerful. So this is just kind of a small scale, and it's, it, this is the real deal, but it's kind of a small scale of what would happen in the real world. So we, we saw what it would happen with the hot dog if you were to touch a power line. Our linemen work on, on our wooden poles. You guys have probably seen uh, at some point or another, you've seen our linemen climbing a pole or a wooden pole. All the, you know, there's a lot of places out there where our trucks just can't get to. So you see Ronnie's got rubber gloves and sleeves on. We're wearing fire retardant clothes. <laughs> Each day before we go to work, and Richard will show you. Richard, you want to show them how you touch your rubber gloves? Can anybody tell me why Richard's gloves might be two different colors? A yellow on the inside, black on the outside? Anybody got a guess? So you can see the color go through. That's exactly right. Little hairline cracks, and Richard's going to show you. We do a visual, visual test and an air test. We pull the fingers apart, and that yellow on the inside, if he's looking at it from the outside, will help them see those little small cracks. And he, what he's doing, he's putting air pressure on there, putting it up to his ear. And even if there's the smallest little pinhole, he'll hear as it gets next to your ear. You can hear air seeping out of there. So, what happens if you do have a pinhole? Why is it so important that our, our linemen check those every day? You know, we depend our our life depends on the uh, how well our the shape of our gloves. So Steve's gonna we're gonna, we're gonna poke a pinhole in a rubber glove, literally just a little stick pin. Stuck a pin in there. We're gonna use that same ground probe that we had the hot dog on. Sometimes it takes a second or two to, to get to the spot. But this is to simulate. We use this for our, our uh, trainees to show them why it's so important that they check their rubber gloves every day. Because we're all human, and sometimes we get busy and forget, lose focus on what we're doing. So we use this for our trainees to, to, to illustrate why it's so important to properly check your rubber gloves every day. takes a second because it was just a literally just a little pinhole but uh, our guys you know you're up there you're, you're on the pole you're standing in the pole you reach up and you're working and, and, and that you could become the path to ground now just this morning we got a new piece of equipment for our, uh, our live line demonstration the uh, the other station we were at this morning loaned is an old piece of fire hose we wet this thing down and we want to demonstrate that if, even even a fire hose if it's wet contaminated will conduct electricity so you may have to look or listen a little close. You'll see this thing start drawing a arc and smoking. All right. So this time of year, day like today, it's real nice outside. A lot of people doing work in their yard. Anybody other than me got wives and got them busy doing all kinds of stuff? Significant others got them busy doing all kinds of stuff? Well, one of the things we want to teach people about, and you guys use aluminum ladders too, right? Most homeowners have an aluminum ladder. Well, any ladder, whether it's wood, fiberglass, certainly aluminum. Aluminum is a great conductor. As you can see, our primary neutral, all our new stuff we put in is aluminum. But aluminum ladder is a great conductor. We saw what happened to the hot dog. Ronnie's going to demonstrate what would happen if you're in a ladder and you get into it, you're carrying it upright around the power line, you get into the power line, that's a ground and plate down there, Ronnie's just going to draw an arc, but you remember the hot dog demonstration, if you're carrying a ladder on your shoulder, your body becomes the path to ground, just like that hot dog did, so we'll just show you how, how good a conductor or aluminum ladder is. demonstration to, to help people understand why it's so important before you go out with that ladder like we talked about our guys checking the rubber walls it's so important to look around and make sure if there's any overhead power lines in the area where they are and if you got to carry a aluminum ladder you know don't carry it extended and get get help carry it horizontally instead of vertically 
I said, you got that thing on your shoulder, it's easy to get it. And we unfortunately have cases like that where people get uh, get into our power lines with an aluminum ladder. That's where one of those times you guys would be out on the same location with us trying to help the uh, person, that unfortunate person. Now, how about a tree branch? A lot of times after a storm, when the winds pick up, you see tree branches hanging off the line like that. Just like that bird, we already talked about that. There's no difference of potential right now. And what could happen, you guys have all seen like a three-phase, what we call a three-phase line with cross arms and everything. But what could happen is you get a, a limb like this hanging off one of our outside lines and hanging off the primary. And if it's not touching anything, you can't see or anything. Show them one more time, Ronnie. That thing's up there, it's energized. It, it is conducting electricity. So if somebody were to come along and say, well, I'll just reach up, you don't hear anything or, or see anything, and try to knock that limb off the line, you could become the path to ground again, just like with the ladder. Um, and we'll show you now. So here, here's with that limb with a little difference of attention. kind of rig this meter base up to, to demonstrate so it does have a it does have a short we've, we've created a short inside but we'll show you in, in just a second what could happen inside that meter base the only thing where the metal prongs are the current flows through that meter you got prongs on the top prongs on the bottom the line side and the low side flows through it if there's a short the only thing that, that's insulating that from going to ground and creating a short is a little plastic what we call a block a little piece of plastic in there if that thing breaks as you're going up after a house fire or something, you're to pull it. You could have a short. We'll show you what could happen there. It's going to make a little, little pop of some smoke. All right. Like we said, most of the time, our, our power lines are absolutely safe as long as they're up in the air. You don't see, they don't give you any problem. They're just, you know, you kind of forget about taking them for granted. But there are times when, when they can become hazardous, and you guys see that. Yeah. That's another location where you and you know the fire department and us lines up on the same location after a vehicle accident where a car hits a pole, and sometimes a, the wire can get down on top of the car. Well, this we've got this little wagon for a couple things. One, it can demonstrate like a car is wired in front, or a crane. Where we do have that happen. Unfortunately, we have cranes that get into the line, and uh, so we've got this metal boom. Going down to our, and all this is a little landscape. Right? Let's get that thing all the way on there. We get it all the way on there. Right. We do have it sitting on, you know, it's got rubber tires. It's sitting on a rubber blanket. So it's it's pretty well insulated. We're going to energize this wagon at full primary voltage, and Ryan's going to put a voltmeter on there to show you. So let's, we've got it energized now. So listen close. Can y'all hear anything? See anything? Smell anything? We well, can't tell, but that wagon, just like a vehicle, is energized at full primary voltage. But you can't tell it. So if you were to walk up and try, you know, somebody gets involved in a vehicle accident as a first responder, you were to walk up, you could become that path to ground, just like we demonstrated with the uh, with the hot dog and everything. So we've got a little uh, model here. This guy look familiar? Anybody recognize this guy? 
That's Steve Kroon from the 70s. <laughs> That's our little Steve doll. But anyway, if you were to walk up, if you were to walk up and you had a down, seriously, if you were to walk up and have a, a down power line on a car, you, you may not know that that car was energized. If you reach up and touch it, you become the passing ground.